Now available in paperback and Kindle, All About Marilyn. Learn all about the struggles of a faded former teen sitcom star in this absolutely fabulous five-star screenplay. Get All About Marilyn in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com today. At the premiere of Creed 3, actor Michael B. Jordan was interviewed by one of the girls who used to tease him back in high school. All images in this video are used under fair use of United States copyright law of 1976 and are used in conjunction with my commentary. B. Jordan, the director and the star of Creed 3. And you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? Oh, the corny kid, right? <laughs> no, I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. No, you did not hear me say cry. I said we used to make fun of the name. But yeah, he is obviously killing things out here. How is the difference between you actually directing and working with the same people that you were directed with versus? Uh, it, it, was, it was awesome. You know, it's a family vibe. Yeah. Last nine, nine years of my life. Um, I spent on the Creed films. Uh, they're very supportive. You know, Tessa, uh, Felicia, Rashad, Wood Harris, people that see me grow up. Yeah. And uh, for the fact that I stepped behind the camera and finally got a chance to direct them, they, they, they loved it. They embraced it. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. And was it difficult for you mentally because you're coming out of a different space? I mean, I was staying in it. This about show. This ain't about Isn't this the sexiest man uh, show off right here? Yeah. Who's the sexiest man? Because now let's. Kind of Who's the sexiest that? man? Because I thought you said you're on the way up. He might be the one right now. He is the one. This is the one right here. Uh -oh. yeah, yeah. So the is one. it a tie? Ain't no tie. We don't, com a, we don't compete. It's not a tie. Yeah, it's we don't compete. Two number ones. Technically. Batman and Batman. Or should I? Oh, no. Can't say that. Superman and Superman. <laughs> Superman and Superman. Sorry. Good luck with that. <laughs> like, bro. Okay, so you also are going to do a new film with Will Smith very soon coming up. Is the rumor out there? Not sure. We're still working on a script. You know, that's something that I plan on doing in the future. Not sure when, you know, with these movies. I'm just trying to get through this project. Right, you know, so right, when, I get right. when I get finished with this one, then I'll figure out what's going on next. And how is it filming in Atlanta? It was amazing. Uh, I've done four or five films down here, shot a couple of television shows. So Atlanta's a second home to me, and I, I love coming down here. Shoot. Favorite restaurant here? Oh, uh, man. Uh, whatever hotel I'm in, their restaurant. <laughs> well, you're not going. Now, actor Michael B. Jordan was confronted by one of his former high school bullies during the premiere of Creed 3. And as he was going on the red carpet for the Creed 3 premiere, he was confronted by Morning Hustle radio show host L'Oreal, who w interviewed Michael B. Jordan on the red carpet and told him that she was one of the students who used to tease him back when he attended high school in Newark, New Jersey. Now, as L'Oreal reminisced about how she and many others used to tease Michael B. Jordan over his name, which is similar to NBA superstar and icon Michael Jordan, they oftentimes said that he was not going to be anything like the NBA legend, even though Michael B. Jordan went out in Newark, New Jersey, carrying a headshot of himself as he aspired to go out here and be an actor. And she often talked about how people used to make fun of him by saying, what are you going to do with that stupid headshot? And when I listened to the way L'Oreal was talking about how she and others mistreated Michael B. Jordan in the past, it reminded me of how people used to treat me back in junior high school and high school when I used to go out here and I would write Mirror Fox stories and when I would, and even by family members, when I was starting to write the first couple of John Haynes stories. And many people, especially in the black community, they like to go out here and deride people who are aspiring to do something different because they don't see where the road to success is going to take someone. And oftentimes, a lot of folks, what they will do is go out here and disrespect a guy who is working on his dream. So I could relate to the way Michael B. Jordan was mistreated back in the day by those who did not have the vision to see where he was going or see what he was aspiring to go out here and achieve. Because again, I've run into this myself with many people in the black community and even in my own family. They don't really see what you're working towards. They don't see what goals you're working to achieve. And because they cannot see what you're trying to do, 
what they do is mock and ridicule you, not seeing that you have, are having faith in the Most High to take you on the road to success. And I have to say that Michael B. Jordan really did a great job of handling himself in that whole situation, being confronted by L'Oreal, one of his former bullies, by keeping everything extremely professional. Because I know, after being confronted by individuals from my own past, how it can trigger up a lot of different angry emotions. And the whole thing is, is that you have to navigate through those emotions and even though you may have feelings about the way this person mistreated you in the past, you have to focus on where you want to go in the present. And when you focus on where you want to go in the present, yes, you may have feelings about the way this person has disrespected you in the past, but you have to understand where you want to go in the present, and you have to not act on those feelings by reacting to this individual, because oftentimes this individual is only going by who they knew in the past. They're not really understanding who you are in the future. And Michael B. Jordan went out here and he understood what he had to lose in this situation because as the director of Creed Three, this was his first directorial debut and he needed to leave a strong impression of professionalism on the on the world and he needed to show how he could handle himself in a situation where he was being confronted by someone from his past who had a more unflattering image of him but it just shows how far he has gone and how much he has grown in the last couple of decades as related to his success because we see Michael B. Jordan when he was on that red carpet basically taking control of that situation basically going out here and, and letting this woman know that he was not faced by her bringing up old memories and showing how he was going to go out here and show everyone that he was going to be a professional and respectable image of a black man. And I really commend Michael B. Jordan for going out here and showing that he had great character and great grace in the middle of this interview because he was out here showing that he was a, a man who's ready for success and ready to contr and be that success who everybody once called a corny kid, but that corny kid is now a member of the A-list, and this member of the A-list isn't corny. No, he's now a, me a, a member of the in-crowd, and he's now commanding the stage, and that basically makes a lot of women like L'Oreal feel really bad because when this guy was out here working on his dream, they basically made fun of him. And as they made fun of him, they didn't see that this was a brother you needed to get in on the ground floor with. But instead of looking to get on the ground floor with a brother like a Michael B. Jordan they, and looking to build with him, they looked to try to tear him down as they were involved with men who were out here tearing down the black communities, such as a Pookie and a Ray Ray. And as they were out here with the Pookies and the Ray Rays, they passed up on brothers like Michael B. Jordan, not understanding that the guy who you dissed may be the guy who you may need to talk to in the future. And this is why it's important to learn to treat everybody with respect when you're younger. That was one of the lessons I learned when I was being bullied in junior high school and high school was to do unto others as I would want done unto me and to treat others the way I would want to be treated because you never know when that person who you dissed back in the day may be a person who can be in a position of power who can go out here and help you but if you go out here and diss them yesterday you may not be able to get their help tomorrow and that is something many people especially in inner city neighborhoods like I grew up in in the South Bronx and, and never really understood. And they would go out here and diss guys for going out here and going for their dreams. They would diss guys for going out here and going outside of the stereotypes that are presented as so-called black. They would diss guys who were out here looking to work on different things and working on their dreams. And they would want nothing to do with those guys at all. But when those guys hit success, 
Then they wanted to revise history and say, oh, I was cool with him. Oh, I was down with him. Or trying to go out here and try to do like L'Oreal did here, trying to reminisce about the past, not understanding you blew your chance at, at a future with a guy like a Michael B. Jordan because you went out here and dissed this brother when he was the skinny kid who was out here with a headshot and a dream. But now that he's gone out and achieved that dream, now you want to go out here and talk about who he was back then when maybe you should have treated this brother with a little bit of respect because this brother was out here working on something. And that's a big problem I saw with many girls back when I was in high school. A lot of girls, they would be out here with the dope boy, they would be out here with the gang members, and they wouldn't give a guy like me a, a look. And again, when these girls start to see a guy out here doing something, then they want to go out here and think about, oh, I want to talk to this guy now. No, why didn't you talk to that guy when he was on the ground floor? I mean, this is the thing that many women today really don't get, that if you want to get with a quality man, a quality man is not somebody who's going to come out established. No, a quality man is going to be a dude who you're going to have to work with, build, work towards building with. And the whole thing is, when I look at Michael B. Jordan, he's the guy, kind of guy, women didn't want to go out here and build with when they, when they were teenagers. And many of these same girls now are complaining, oh, Michael B. Jordan goes out here with white women. Well, the whole problem is, is that you never went and got in on the ground floor with a guy like a Michael B. Jordan when he had that headshot, when he was going out on auditions, you didn't give him any comfort when he was being cooked and roasted by these casting directors. You didn't give him any sort of support when he was going out here working on these auditions, when he was out here working the extra jobs, when he was out here trying to establish a career. But then these same women, after they have dissed a guy like a Michael B. Jordan, want to go and get up in his face. And again, they want to complain he was, he was, he was corny back then. But what's really sad is they didn't never got an edu social education on working with a man because the way you get to a guy with the success of a Michael B. Jordan is you got to go out here and build with that man and you have to work with that man as he's going out here getting the bricks, as he's getting the mortar, as he's working on building up him, his life and he's working on building himself up from stage to stage, that's how you go out here and find a man like a Michael B. Jordan to make him a husband. Because if you don't, you wind up like L'Oreal, winding up interviewing a Michael B. Jordan for a radio network instead of being on the red carpet as his wife. And that's possibly one of the things that burnt up your L'Oreal, whose hair is as fake as the cosmetics that are out here. She was out here looking like Harley Quinn, and basically, just Michael B. Jordan was basically going along with the interview, seeing that she was basically a joke. And the sad part is, when I look at the whole story as related to Michael B. Jordan confronting this former bully, that he he shows us that whole Alex L. artwork um, comic where he talk where he has the nerdy guy and the girl with the thug, and then the guy gets the success. It's basically art coming to life as related to this interview. But this interview, again, just shows us all that we ha whenever we are out here, we need to treat others like we want to be treated. We need to do unto others as we want done to us. And we need to show respect to those who are around us because we never know when that person may rise to a prominent place. And if they see you, they may remember you and the whole thing is they may remember to forget you when they get their success. Now, if you want to pick up some of my books on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find those books at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos about celebrities like a Michael B. Jordan, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. 
That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker, a man who rules the world, takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Godbreaker at online booksellers today.